Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to another Real Madrid preview. This is the preview to Real Madrid against Espanyol at the Santiago Bernabeu of what will be back to back league games at the Bernabeu and back to back to back games in all competitions at the Bernabeu as well. It's gonna be a big game. Um, it's gonna be the next two league games at home are winnable, should be comfortable, and based off how Real Madrid played against Stuttgart midweek, you would expect that Real Madrid at home to Espanyol and Alaves can get the win. And I think that, you know, straight off the bat, it's not trying to be disrespectful to those two teams, but I believe that this should be you know a win it has to be a win and of course you know with the league table looking not the greatest so far and you know with Barcelona having a trip away to Villarreal and you know potentially maybe some points drop there obviously they play a Champions League game as well so um but they also do play um after we do so they get that rest back but you know they have their own problems in terms of injuries it is a good time to make up hopefully points on barcelona and it's not looking likely they'll drop points anytime soon but you have to stay in this fight you have to be in there because four points off the table leaders the league leaders barcelona um, and you know we're not comfortable in third right now I mean Atletico Madrid same amount of points in second Villarreal same amount of points in fourth so look this table is still very very you know um, unpredictable it's five games in but it is time to you know get back the momentum after a pretty Disappointing and frustrating start to the season as we have talked about in the first couple of games of the season um, Let's talk about Espanyol because they are currently Sitting in 12th where they are probably gonna finish they'll probably finish in that 11 to 15 area You know, I don't think they'll get relegated. I think they will have enough to stay out um, But they aren't gonna pose a big threat. Their last away game was funnily enough away against Atletico Madrid. They got themselves a nil nil draw, although to be honest, Atletico Madrid dominated but just couldn't finish um, their chances. And they played away at the start of the season to Real Valladolid and lost. And funnily enough, we beat Real Valladolid at home. So if you can't beat Espanyol there's some craziness going on right here so I think this will be a win of course you can never say it's definitely going to be a win but I think this is a very high likelihood of it being a victory they've got some good players um, Belize from I think that's Spurs they've got you know Puado I remember he was you know a, a, a bit of a prospect um, over the last couple of years they've got Cardona, Calero, um, Alex Crow, ex West Ham midfielder, they've got Carreras up front as well, they've got um, anyone else here, um, Pere Mila, um, ex Elche, um, Fernando Pacheco, a very very decent keeper but I don't know if he's their main choice keeper because they've got another one who looks like he might be the first choice um, they've got Exposito remember him from a few years ago so look this side have a few players I think a player like Puado will definitely um, be a danger man but I would argue that you know you compare their team compared to even you know and Las Palmas uh, Real Valladolid the teams that we've played 
you know, it's not massively great. I mean, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. You know, this should be a win, and it has to be. And you know, in terms of it being a home game as well, at you know the extra advantage. Of course, going away to Espanol would be tough, but. At home, home advantage. There isn't a reason to not get this win, really, if you think about it. Now, look, I'm gonna go through my starting eleven, and I've made some changes as what I would do, um, or slash what I think will be done. You know, it's kind of a mix. But the back five, I have kept the same. Um, look. There will be certain people saying, "Why not give Lunin a chance?" And I'll tell you why I probably won't, because I believe that, considering you have got Espanyol home, Alaves home, Atletico Madrid away as three games in a row, I'd say Courtois starts against Espanyol, Lunin starts against Alaves. And Courtois comes back for Atletico. I think that makes more sense. So look, I don't. There is a very high chance Ancelotti doesn't even, you know, give Lunin a game in this tree. But I say stick with Courtois. He's just come off a back of making seven to eight saves against Stuttgart. He's proven time and time again why he, on his day, is the best keeper in the world. It's time to get him to regain some momentum. After a season-long injury last season, of course, he doesn't need a lot of time to come back. He's not an outfield player, but it's still good to give him some more games. The back line, there isn't a need to change it. I wouldn't. I mean, Lucas Vasquez started against Stuttgart. Militao got some rest. He did come on, but he got a lot of rest compared to the rest, so he comes back in. I don't see a reason to start Fran Garcia or Lucas Vasquez. As the fullbacks, so I'll keep it with the same tidy t back four and back five in general. Very very solid. That um, still, you know, the likes of Alaba still out. Um, Vallejo, he's not gonna get a game. Just not good enough. And I think even if you have a centre back not available or not fit, Chouamene will probably play there. Carvajal will probably play there. Manny will probably play there. There will be better solutions than Vallejo. And that is the truth, you know. Jesus Vallejo shouldn't be here anymore. He should have left the midfield now. Deep line, Tramene, the deepest of the three. As you can see, I've dropped Bellingham for Luka Modric. Now look, I think Bellingham has just come back off, you know, an injury for about, you know, two months or so, a month and a half. Give him time to slowly get back into the team. He started against Stuttgart. He played very well. Yes, but yeah, I think Modric can start this game. And then Fede Valverde, um, he's just a beast, isn't he? He's just an absolute machine in the midfield, as we know. So he starts. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Bellingham started along with Tramini and Valverde. Similarly, maybe Arda Gula plays in that centre midfield position but I've changed that up because I've gone with Arda Gula on the right with Mbappe and Vinny now look I don't see Mbappe and Vinny Jr getting dropped um, I was very tempted to start Endrick but I don't see Mbappe dropped at all I don't see Vinny dropped the front three if we had to rotate it would be Rodrigo and look he just had an amazing game against Stuttgart he played really well, but again, it's about getting the fitness, it's about getting the rest. And I feel like if you can drop or rotate a player with a player who is young, who's looking for minutes, looking for games, and Arda Gula has not had a lot of chances so far this season. You know, he's had a couple, obviously he's come on in a couple and started a couple, but He's not had a lot of chances, so it's probably best to let him start. He's not a bad player. He will create, he will, you know, um, work hard for the team. So it's not really a big risk. Obviously, Abraham Diaz out for about seven to eight weeks now. 
he can play so realistically if you were to rotate it will be Arda Gula on the right again as I said I don't see either Vinny or Mbappe getting swapped although I would like to see at a point of time maybe Vinny gets dropped and Mbappe goes up to the left and Andrik starts up front maybe you can see the experiment but if something isn't broken don't fix it so yeah for me I just think that you know Vinny and Mbappe are too good in terms of what they can do at their best and that's not anything to do with Rodrigo but I'm just thinking you know maybe the front three can be rotated again it could well be Vinny and Mbappe and Rodrigo that starts very likely but if I was to make a change I would probably you know bring Arda Gula in on that right hand side um, and obviously you know when he was playing in the center with Rodrigo you know Rodrigo and Mbappe Vinny all play on the left he had to cover on to the right so a lot of mess now let him stay on the right hand side and with Arda Gula this season every time he has played he doesn't give that confident vibe he doesn't give that kind of I am confident you know he has the ball he passes it backwards and I'm not expecting magic from Arda Gula but just to build up the confidence on the ball for Arda Gula would be good and I think Espanyol are a decent side um, they're not great they're not you know your top four so this will be a good game to see what Arda Gula is about so that would be my starting 11 again as I said the likes of Bellingham Rodrigo could start they could well start so we'll wait and see but finally to end off score prediction simple for me I'm gonna go with a 3 nail win uh, I'm confident but obviously you know not to be too arrogant because I think Espanyol might you know have a couple of opportunities but I think that potentially a clean sheet at home is doable but let me know what thoughts are down below hope you guys have enjoyed today's video hit the like if you did subscribe to the channel if you guys aren't already and I'll see you guys in the next one peace